We have just had a ton of adjustments, buffs, nerfs and changes to maps in Identity 5. Some of them are very noticeable and others are less obvious. And some of these may even confuse you the first time you see them implemented. So let's list some of the most notable changes that have come with this update. Mercenary got hit very hard with this update. Originally his chair time used to be extended by 30% and he also had 4 elbow pads. Now his chair time has been changed from 30% to 10% longer and instead of 4 elbow pads he now has 3. But to counter these nerfs they also have given him a small little buff in the form of his healing time. Originally it took him 20% longer to heal, now it only takes him 15% longer so it's a 5% increase. Painter can now interact with windows and also with palettes without having to stop painting. Before when you were painting with the picture you had to press the button to stop painting and then you could interact with something. This was a big pain because there was a small window where you couldn't interact with the window or a palette and you would get hit. Now you don't need to cancel it, it will cancel itself as soon as you decide to interact with the window or with the palette. He's also getting a small buff in how fast he places his paintings. There are lots of situations where painter places a painting but he then gets hit while he's in the motion of putting the painting down. So now he'll place it a little bit faster but to counter this it will take a little bit longer for him to memorize one of the hunter's faces by 0.5 seconds. Mind's Eye can now use her cane slam ability that reveals the location of the hunter to also slow down the interaction speed of that hunter if Mind's Eye is in a certain range of that hunter. The similar to the way that Acrobat's Ice Ball works, slowing down the interaction speed, for example vaulting windows, or breaking pallets, or picking up a survivor. The closer she is to the hunter when she uses the cane, the slower the interaction speed, up to a maximum of 30% if Mind's Eye is within 8 meters of that hunter. She's also getting a small buff in the way that when she's normally walking, she should be able to see the hunter a little bit further away than before. First Officer has had a complete overhaul of his abilities and I must say I don't completely still understand how his new abilities work. It's going to take some testing and some trying to work out what this actually means but now he can hypnotize with his pocket watch. The further away you are from the hunter the smaller the delay they see between the actual person and the illusion. You also have to reactivate it within 10 seconds or it will cancel the invisibility. One of the very important changes to First Officer as well is that when he gets hit when he's using his pocket watch, he gets tie turner for 5 seconds, meaning that he can take a hit, rescue and then get away, without having to get knocked down instantly. Entomologist has also had a big overhaul to abilities, but not to the same extent that First Officer has. Her bees have been changed considerably, now when she casts the bees, the bees will not appear in front of her, but will appear around her. This is a good way of making a physical shield since her bees can block certain abilities from certain hunters. Not only that, but also when she pushes a survivor, the survivor will not be at the front of the bees but instead be in the center of the bees. So now survivors will be safe from foggy blades, also gamekeeper's hook and other abilities like this. Moving on to the hunters, the first big change we have is to guard 26. Now when you are rescuing from a chair and guard 26 sets some bombs to stop you from rescuing, the explosion of the bomb will not cancel the rescuing animation and you'll still be able to rescue but you still will take that damage. Also to nerf slightly the amount of damage that the survivors will get from the explosions, survivors will not take any damage for 1.2 seconds after getting hit by the first bomb meaning that guard 26 cannot spam bombs on you and instantly get you down. This should make rescuing from guard 26 a little bit easier and maybe a little bit more possible. When Dreamwitch's main body is within 20 meters of a survivor, that survivor will get a small alert or notification to know that Dreamwitch is in the area. This should be able to prevent some terror shocks and also inform you as to where the hunter is. Geisha has had a major change in her abilities. Now she can use her butterflies when she is in the air. Before you had to cast your butterflies and then rise up in the air to be able to dash towards that butterfly. Now when you are in the air you can throw your butterflies almost across the map and you can fly towards them. This can be useful when trying to defend a chair but also when you're trying to move around the map because you can use this to be able to transport yourself similar to teleport. I have seen some videos of this and I'm not sure if this is the actual final implementation but it looks like you can travel from one side of the map to the other by just throwing a butterfly to the other side of the map. Also her dashing speed has been increased meaning that she can move to her butterflies faster so it will be a lot more difficult to juke when she's dashing towards you maybe even helping her to cover more ground before you react and look at her. 
Mad Eyes has had some interesting changes, and not all of them have gone through the way that they were planned. One of the buffs for Mad Eyes is the placement of the consoles on each map have been adjusted and maybe even optimized to make it better for him to be able to see more of the map. Although it says that he has lost some of his consoles on some of the maps. Yet, as a nerf, the amount of time that it takes for a survivor to decode one of his consoles has been decreased from 5 seconds to 3.5 seconds, so it'll be much faster for survivors to cancel them and use their energy. Axeboy has had an adjustment to a lot of his abilities. They have decreased the range of him being able to use his Fireball Soul ability. They have also made it that when a survivor is running out of the corrupted area, they will not be affected by another slow if they enter another corrupted area and leave within 4 seconds. So for example, if you exited the corrupted area, get slowed, but then go back in again and then go back out again, as long as it's within 4 seconds of having done it the first time, you will be unaffected. His trees have also got a nerf in the form that they take less time to destroy, decreasing from 12 seconds to 8 seconds, much faster. Wu Chang has had a couple of adjustments to his abilities too. Now every survivor will know when Wu Chang uses his umbrella teleporter capability. They will be able to hear the sound that he makes when he throws his umbrella. Also, when he's at full presence, his area of effect when he teleports to one of his umbrellas, for example the bell or the soul siphon that appears when he changes his form, will now be reduced in the size of the area. Also, his bell when he's using it in straight in front of him will also be decreased in its length. Not only have the survivors and also the hunters been changed, but some of the maps have had some adjustments too. In Sacred Heart Hospital, the bird cage, which is the area within the hospital that has the cipher, that used to have two windows, now one of those windows has been replaced for a big hole with a pallet next to it. This should make it easier for people to enter and exit the hospital and also make it better for hunters who teleport to that cipher to not instantly have to then vault the window and waste more time. This can also make it better for survivors who want to get into hospital from outside, meaning that they can then vault the window and loop it. Chinatown has had a lot of adjustments. One of the corner roads that lead towards one of the exit gates that used to be open and empty has now got a big debris wall with a little pallet in the center. A couple of pallets have also disappeared from the map, for example the one that leads up to the stairs in the hotel room, one of those has been removed. There is also a pallet that is right in front of a bridge and that has also been removed to make it more difficult for survivors to loop that area. Also certain areas and certain ruins on that part of the map have been adjusted and moved and some new windows with breaking walls have been made. In Ever Sleeping Town, one of the strongest areas in Ever Sleeping Town has now been adjusted. The corner house with the two windows has now had one of those windows adjusted and changed into a big hole, making that area a little less stronger for survivors, but also debatably more fair. There are a lot more changes to hunters and survivors that have been added to the game, but those were the major ones that I thought were more notable. Are there any more that you think are very important to mention that I should have mentioned in this video? Well, tell me down in the comments below. And if you found this information useful, please give this video a like and subscribe if you'd like to learn some tips, some tricks, and maybe some secret information about Identity 5 that you didn't know. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.